Welcome back, everyone, to True Perspective, New Believers Bible Study Podcast. I want to welcome everyone. Can you guys believe this is episode 15, man? Wow. 15. But uh, I just want to thank everyone for listening uh, in all over America. We're in the UK and Africa. Man, it's amazing. South America. South America. Yeah. Glory to God, man. Yeah. Um we're on Apple Podcast now, so uh, find us on Apple, New Believers Podcast, True Perspective. We're on YouTube. I keep changing the handle, uh, trying to make it easier for you guys, but it is at new underscore believer, and the name is just Jesus, and there's a picture of, uh, it says, walk out of darkness, Jesus is the light, and there's a playlist, New Believers Bible Study, True Perspective. I'll put all the links in the description below. But, uh, yeah, we're going to come to what uh, John chapter 7. And usually when we go into a new chapter, we do a passage or a verse from uh, Psalms and a passage or a verse from uh, Proverbs. So I, uh, I had recently put my dog down uh, not that long ago. And uh, I always go to Psalm 34, man. And uh, this time, uh, 7, 8, or no, 7 through 10 actually spoke to me. But... Uh, Go ahead, Jacob. You want to read that? All right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and read it. So we're in Psalm 34, uh, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. And just real quick, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, Jesus, right? The man. Yep, the angel. So if it says the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus. Uh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. <laughs> wow. What a promise. Right. And it says, taste and see that the Lord mm -hmm. is good. Try them for yourself. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like what I say to you the other day, Nick, uh, you ever had a homeboy uh, tell you, don't go see that movie. It's crap. And then you go watch it and you're like, hey, it's actually pretty good. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Taste and see it for yourself, man. Yeah. yeah, then I said, then you got to find a new friend. Yeah, right. <laughs> I remember that conversation. Yeah. Yeah, and that's honestly, when I came back to the Lord, that was one of the verses that um, really stuck out to me. It's in, I believe it's in Romans, but it says that it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. Yeah. Like I remember thinking, you know, the whole time I was just being a hypocrite and being in the world, trying to be with God. I remember thinking like, man, he's going to make something bad happen, so I'll come back on track, you know. But really, he would just show me his grace and his goodness and everything that he had for me. And that's when I was like, okay, I want to serve him. You know, I want to love him with, with uh, all my heart, you know, and yeah. and just go after him. But in verse 10, it says, the young lions lack and suffer hunger. So what's that a picture of, right? These people who maybe seem like they're able, right? The ones, the, the young lions, right? Mm -hmm. You would think if anybody can provide for themselves, it's those guys, you know, the young lions that are out there with the energy and they're lions, right? But it says that they lack and suffer hunger. Right, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Nothing good. Right. They're content. They're content. You know, so it's not about the person who's able to go make all this happen. Even they're still going to stumble sometimes and struggle. Right. But if you trust in the Lord, you're not going to lack any good thing. Yeah, I kind of took it <clears throat> the lions as us. They're so prideful. Oh, hundred percent. And so I, when I read it, my, the NIV is a little different. The lions may grow weak and hungry. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. So on mine, it doesn't say the young lions. Mm -hmm. So I just had to think of it as the lions. And mm -hmm. for me, I was trying to, I see it as our pr like pride, yeah. lions, the pride of lions, you know, mm -hmm. and how tough they are. And everybody kind of looks up to them and how tough we think we are. But without the Lord, yeah. you know, we're, we're not going to have, we're going to grow weak and tired. And if we seek the Lord, we won't. Mm -hmm. That's how I kind of took it. Oh, that's exactly it. Yeah, like... um what really stuck out to me was verse 8, right? Taste and see, right? So that's internal. You know what I mean? Like taste, it's got to get inside of you. You got to get the Lord inside of you, right? And what do we learn? The angel of the Lord who encamps around those who fear him. So I, I want to make sure I respect the Lord. A healthy fear. I mean, I respect him. I know him. And uh, I want that angel of the Lord. I want Jesus to encamp around me, you know? Yeah. I think you guys all bring up great points. And I think... You guys hit it on each thing that you guys just said because um, we we were all brought up in a way where the prideness, right? Well, 
you know, you, you, as we were growing up, we don't have that, like, oh, I believe in Jesus, and you're not talking about it, you're not doing anything uh, because you believe that it's not the macho thing to do, right? You're you're too tough for that. Um, but then once we're all going to get to a point in our life where we're going to need mm -hmm. the Lord in our life. And once we do taste and we allow ourselves to get that taste of the Lord in us, we're going to realize what a great gift we're going to get. Right. Yeah. That's something I've been thinking about this past week. You know, we teach our, uh, we teach our kids, right? Like do it yourself, you know, be, be independent. Nobody's going to do it for you. Right. All these things, which that's just the way of the world. Really. We should be teaching them. Hey, ask God for help, you know, yeah. depend on him. He'll help you, whatever the situation is. But, uh, yeah, man, that's why we recommend reading a Psalm is because no matter where you're at in life, you can probably open up any Psalm and it'll speak to you, you know, there's so many good promises that you can really hold on to and, and take it to the Lord and ask him to fulfill it. So. Yeah. I'm not on, on same thing with, on, um, Anthony, when he said the taste and see, I like to change taste to test because it makes you almost like an action word, you know, cause it's, I think a lot of people are like, what do you mean by taste? I don't mean, just test it, mm -hmm. put it to mm -hmm. the test, put the word to the test, yes. you know? And so I think, you know, for me at least as a new, newer, um, in this walk and just kind of going through the Bible almost for the first time, you know, I mean, it, 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 I am really, but to make me understand things that sometimes you have to find those words that you can replace that are still in context. That's yeah. a great point. You guys bring up again that unless you start studying it and, and reading it, because a lot of people, I mean, I've read this book before, but I didn't grasp anything from it. But now that we're sitting here as this group, even though I read this verse before many times, I don't under fully understand it. And right now how we're talking, I'm getting so much from it because we're studying it here. And I want the listeners to understand if you study it, you're going to realize it. And don't just count on yourself. Pray to the Lord first. That he gives you that will to, to understand it, but also... Get with other people who are trying to learn it as well and discuss that with them, other family members, good friends, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. Like-minded believers. It's always good to fellowship, right? What it says in the book of Hebrews, right? Uh, not to lack our, what, to not, to, to, you know I mean? Like, for, or how, forsake the, the, the fellowship mm -hmm. of the believers, you know? Yeah, right. Who's got the proverb? All right. All right, I got the Proverbs. Um, Where you at? Proverbs 27. So, there, I, I was reading, um, as I mentioned before, every day I read Proverbs in whatever date it is, right? And today is the 27th, and I was reading this one today. And then right before we started today, I started looking at all the verses again, there's so many good ones in 27, but I just want to stick with one. Keep it simple with there for everybody. But we're at Proverbs 27, uh, verse one. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what the day may bring forth. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Where a lot of times we're um, planning ahead, right? Where we're we're thinking to ourselves what we're what we're gonna be doing the next few days weeks ahead and what you mentioned earlier jake is that we gotta get with the lord too before we start planning and making sure hey lord this is what i'm planning uh if it's not the right time or something you know then make sure it doesn't happen but it, this is my plan and i want you to be okay with it mm -hmm. you know just talk to him about it like that you know and see what happens and this right here just says to me hey don't plan without discussing it with him first. Run it by the boss. Right. right. Check right. in with the big homie. Oh, yeah. If the yeah. Lord wills, you know. Yeah. Got to check in. Uh, yeah. I actually want to read verse two as well. Uh, Let another man praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. I mean. Come on. Such, I mean, that's wisdom, right? You could. Yeah. I mean, today, you know, we hear those people that are always talking about themselves and how great of a job they've done. All you think about oh, this guy, you know. Yeah. But if you could just teach like your kids yourself even, right? Just don't worry about praising yourself, right? 
just do what the Lord tells you to do, work hard, whatever it is, right? And let another stranger praise you. Because we're never, never, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, to, in the oh, end, right. self-boasting is, it's false. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The other thing, too, is it, 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 I don't know how to put this into words. If we're thinking about kids on social media, they're always looking for the likes. Mm -hmm. You know, don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. worry, worry about what God wants. That's good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so let someone else praise you by your own mouth. Like, why are you going to seek others? You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know that it's kind of opposite of what this is saying, let others praise you, but that doesn't mean go to social media. And when you find, and find praise, praise yourself, you. yeah, yeah, because right. yeah. social yeah. media is a self praise. Yeah, you're out there boasting yourself and hoping someone likes it, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas it's, we should be glorifying God on those places. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I know it's like it says let other people praise you, but I, th I don't think social media is that place to find that either, unless you're boasting yeah. with the Lord. Oh, I yeah. think exactly, exactly. I don't think yeah. that's what it's talking about. Your selfies and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to keep that clear. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, th and like I said, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy. I was, like I said, I was trying to figure out how to put it into words. I see it, but it just, I didn't know how to make it sound great. And, and I know I'm off, but I think you guys kind of understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's, it still we, fits. You know, we, um, we use social media for different things and, I think most of it is self boasting. Exactly. And so it's kind of, let's change that perspective and get back that, let's gain back that territory. Yeah. It's kind of where I'll. Amen. Amen to that. Well, you know what's so cool about it is like the Bible is so applicable today. Like, even though it's so outdated and oh, it's thousands of year old book, how can it be used for? I can still use patience when I drive. I can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can still use this stuff for social media, for things like I can still use the principles and the, and the ethics of the Bible. We just got to pull them out and, and apply them to our life, you know? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Let's dive into it. John chapter 7. Amen. Who wants to lead it off? All right. Go around this way. Yeah. So I'm in uh, NIV, folks. And um, this one, uh, the title on this one in my book is uh, Jesus Redic uh, bro Jesus Jesus's Brothers Ridiculum. And so, um, let me, uh, yeah, okay. After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders were there looking for a way to kill him. But when the Jewish festival of the tabernacles was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples may uh, see the works that you do. Uh, no one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world, for even his own brothers did not believe in him. Uh, okay. So what uh, what really stuck out to me was, like, uh, who are the brothers that he's talking about? Is it the disciples? Is it, you know, like, who, who is he talking about? Are his fleshly brothers? I thought it was his real brothers. Yeah, like his half brothers. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think it's his brothers. Uh, so in my study Bible here, it says that Matthew thirteen fifty five, which is like a parallel verse to this verse in a different gospel. It's like James it says uh, list Jesus brothers as James, uh, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. Yeah. So it says that they didn't believe. So we see the how the world the unbelievers how the, how they see. I mean, like. No one uh, who does these signs wants to do it in secret. You know what I mean? But Jesus, he 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 is only sent by the Father. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why we'll see later on. He says, "You guys go to the feast. I'm right. not. I'm not going yet." I mean, the Feast of Tabernacles. It was like um, the feast of the Jews, right? When they were sitting booths, representing when they're out there in the wilderness and and the water and all that. But um, yeah, is that is that the Han is that Hanukkah? Uh. I think I, I did know. read something online about that I being like Hanukkah. Yeah, like a comparison. Yeah, well, so it says the the tabernacle, the feast of tabernacles. Uh, we can kind of go into it. So first, you know, verse one, it says after these things Jesus walked in, in Galilee. Uh, so that they said it's like a six month gap between the end of chapter six and the beginning of chapter seven. Yeah. Um, and it says because the Jews sought to kill him, right? Which we've already established that. Uh, talking about like the Jewish religious leaders wanted to kill him. Um, now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand, the feast of tabernacles, I guess they used to like set up like tents and kind of pitch that and celebrate, you know, all that the Lord had provided for them. It was actually one of the mandates that he had given them back in the old Testament to come. Uh, all the men would have to go and see him like three times a year. Right. It was like a pilgrimage festival. Like a pilgrimage. Yeah. yeah. To come spend time with the Lord and all that kind of stuff. So, um, this is just kind of like they're continuing on that celebration 
and honoring the Lord for all that he's given them. Um, but yeah, his brothers therefore said to him, depart from here, go into Judea, that your disciples also uh, may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. So they're kind of challenging him, right? Yeah. And yeah. you can kind of, you can hear the sarcasm a little bit in their, in their voice when they're talking. You know, no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. And then verse five confirms that for even his brothers did not believe in him. You yeah. see, you see how uh, you see the unbelief. Yeah, unbelief. they're acting just like we do with people that we don't believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're acting like men. They're, yeah. we're, we're, they're talking crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, that, that is not. But see, the thing oh, is, they, is that person that we're talking about has the knowledge we don't. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. But my question, my question here is. Why? Why were they challenging him like that? I mean, do they want to see how everybody else was going to react before they jump on the bandwagon with him, or what were they really doing on this challenge here? You go and spread it to the world. See what you know. Ah, what? What? What were they really trying to get out of that? They're trying to rush him. I think it doesn't really say. I mean, we know that they didn't really come to faith till after his resurrection. Yeah, yeah. His own brothers, right? Yeah. So I think they they really didn't believe him. But I think just like any brother will do, like you said, they're talking crap, right? Poking yeah. at him a little bit and yeah. telling him, well, go do this. Then. Like you go, you go. Right. If, if you are who you say you are, go, go do this then, right? And in public. Yeah. I try to look at this and see where the message is, you know, like, what are we supposed to, I think that we're supposed to know, hey, our families are going to not believe us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or they're going to, they're going to talk about us because we, we have the knowledge. Well, you just, you see how the yeah. world believes. They, they just, they don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You go. Well, I, I think he's about to answer yeah. some of our questions. Oh, yeah. We could read it when we read uh, yeah, 6 through sure. 10. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. You go up to the feast. I am not yet going up to the feast. For my time has not yet fully come. When he had said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. Um. Okay. Any comments on that one? Yeah, yeah. It's the same reminder he told his mom. It's exact same thing. Same yeah. He's like, hey, I'm not ready yet. So yeah. what does that mean, though? Right. Uh, my time has not yet come. So he's talking about how it's not in the father's timetable yet for yeah. him to go. Right. So the Lord obviously hadn't made it clear for him to go yet. Yeah. So you see how like perfect he was? Like everything he did had to be in alignment with the father's will. Gotta go check in. Right, exactly. Yeah. So he's saying my time has not come yet. But yours is but always. But your time is always ready. What does that mean? Right, they can go whenever they want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to read that and think like, you know, like he was kind of rebuking them back. Like, hey, you could die at any time, you know? Yeah. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying like, yeah, you guys can go whenever you want, right? Because obviously they're not in alignment with the father. Yeah, you know? exactly. So yeah. it's weird because they're almost sending him to, to his death. Do yeah. They, do they know? Right. Do, do they? Do you think? Well, I'm, I'm sure he didn't reveal it to him yet. But I don't. Yeah. So I he don't, really doesn't like give any. He drops hints, but yeah. they're not smart mm -hmm. enough, so he has to change the way he talks to them sometimes because he's right. constantly telling them, "Hey, my time mm -hmm. is ending." They just don't realize right. what ending he means. Right. Right. You know. In verse seven, too, what really stood out to me, right? It says that the world uh, cannot hate you, but it hates me. Why though? I mean, because it says right because he testifies of the evil of the world, right? He's mm -hmm. the light of the world. What does light do? Exposes, exposes yeah, the darkness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and which is true, right? I mean, and so it depends on the perception of the people too, right? So the world cannot hate you, so they don't hate you because you're a part of it, right? You're yeah. for the world, right? But it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. Well, yeah, I mean, you go around telling people that you know, hey, you're evil because what you're doing is wrong. They're probably going to hate you and feel some type of way, right? Yeah. But he has a greater purpose. He's t trying to expose the fact that they need a savior. Right now they're going through life thinking everything is hunky-dory. They're good people. They're right with God. And Jesus is trying to tell them, like, hey, no, right? You're condemned. You're a walking dead man. Y you know, you're going to go to hell. You are evil. But I'm only telling you that so that way you can realize that you need a savior, which I am, right? So he's exposing the problem. But he's also the solution too, right? So he's not just going calling people out because he wants to, you know, just because it's fun to him. He's yeah. doing it so they can open up their eyes to see, 
I need Jesus and what he did for me at the cross. He's sharing the bad news so then he can share the good news. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the same problem we face today. People always say, you know, Christians are homophobic. They're so narrow minded, you know, whatever they say. But it's like we're we're only saying those things because we want you to realize that, hey, God is holy and he's loving. Right. We're trying to bring you to that place of repentance and faith in Christ. Right. And so I would agree if anybody points out your sin without the the remedy, which is Jesus, then, you know, I think they have the wrong focus. It's both, you know, pointing out you're sick, you know, you have a problem, but hey, I, ha- I found the solution because I was in your same place, you I, know. I got the cure. I got the cure. He, cu- he cured me. Let me, I'm just trying to give it to you. Yeah. Right. And of course, Sharing we share the truth in love. Yes. Right. That's what we're called to do. It's tough. That's it such is a tough. tough thing to do. It's oh, hard. Oh, that's man. hard, man. You know, it is. I mean, and that's why you have to be in the word because yeah. it, it tells you how to, to approach people because mm-hmm. it, it makes you really focus on love because mm-hmm. if you don't approach them with that love, the love is the answer. Right. To the, you know, so if I say, Hey, so-and-so blah, 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 but here's the love. I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you the solution to that problem you have. Oh yeah. And it's Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's, I'm going to give you the love. That's the, the uh, you come full circle with the love. And even sometimes Christians, you know, it's hard to, you have to remind yourself like we're doing this in love. You know, sometimes it's easy to get frustrated. Like, man, I can't believe they're still doing this or, you know, that they haven't given their lives to the Lord yet or that they can you continue in the sin. But then you think back like, well, that was me at one point. Yeah. You know, yeah. God had exposed it to me. He rescued me. And Lord, I need you to rescue them too. Right. Yeah. You have to have that heart. It reminds me specifically of one time we went out to uh, to go uh, in San Francisco. We gave out Bibles and coffee and pastries and, you know, try to share the gospel with some homeless people. And one of the ladies that went was like, man, they really stink. You know, like she was having this conversation to herself. She wasn't lying. And the boy, yeah, she wasn't right. <laughs> but the Lord spoke to her and said, hey. You didn't smell so good either when I came and rescued you. You know, it's like, all right. Put it in her place. Right. I mean, I'm, yeah. yeah, I don't share that to, you know, criticize her because that's all of us. I'm just saying, yeah, you know, absolutely. that we were that sinner at one point too, yeah. you know, and so that's why we try to. And we still are because we're not perfect. You know, we're going to fall mm-hmm. and we got to get back up and just continue to believe. But you're absolutely right. We're all. We we're all, all dirty ones. Yeah. We were, we're all there. dirty ones. Yep. That's, that's that pride that keeps us from going out and, and ministering, evangelizing. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of people have that, they have that mentality that they're afraid to make that mistake or they're going to meet someone that, you know, is doing worse than them. It's going to really open up. God's going to shine a light on you. He's going to show you the things that you're having, that you're not dealing with. And you're hoping that because you're going out, it's going to solve those things. He's just going to expose those things to you. Cause like when we were out last night, you, you, you're, we were over on the West side and, um, you just start like the testimony. Some of the people said, Hey man, I'm glad you guys are here. I was just about to go do something bad. Wow. Yeah. And then it makes you think like, Hey, you know, we were over here complaining about, um, you know, the the crappy day we had. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, I was tired. I didn't want to go out there. Yeah. You know, I was like, you just you know not that we're, we're obedience we're gonna do it but when you're there and that happens you're just like yeah you found the joy and you know yeah. and it's like and then it was like four back to back to like yeah. just Nine miracles stop. that came back you know wow that was really good we had a gentleman nice. that came up and um he uh he was mad at god because god touched him when he was in um he was real high he's like god god healed my back it was, it was a he was telling us like yeah god God's healed me. And we're like, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, we, um, he's been homeless for a while, but he had this injury to his, his shoulder blade where it had cracked and he couldn't lift his arm up because it would separate every time the, the, anyways, I'm, I regress. But at the end he said, um, you know, God, God, I've had an encounter with Jesus. He's healed me. He's like, there was a pastor that was in, was it Hillmore? He said, Hilmar, he's in Hilmar and a, and, a, and a guy put his hands on him and prayed for him. And the guy, and he was high. He's like, yeah, I don't really remember him too much. But when he was done, the next morning he woke up, he could, he's he even like was in the, he was in the tent going, waving his arms around. Like, yeah, I was able to move my arm and everything. And he's like, I just started crying for like two months straight. I was mad because Jesus, I wanted to see Jesus, mm-hmm. but he was so high when he was healed. He doesn't have any recollection, recollection of the event. He just woke up healed. You know, and so he and so he had this anger for a long time because he he was kept searching for the Lord, like come back. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure how that all works, but you know, you just you just it it. What I was getting to, and I know I, I went long, but it, um, you have to just 
trust. You have to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think part of the problem too is where we go wrong is that, you know, we as Christians, we have to remember, remember that we don't have our own righteousness. It's not our righteousness. You know, it's the righteousness that Jesus gave us. Right. So you can't be, uh, you know, self-righteous or proud or think down on people when really, Hey, we're just as bad, except we've come to the solution now. Yeah. You know, we have his righteousness on our own, but that should motivate us to go out and, you know, try to share for others. All right. Pick it up in verse 10. Um, so he just, he just told his brothers, right? You guys go, I'm not going yet. Yeah. But verse 10, uh, but when his brothers had gone up, then he also went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. So he didn't lie there, right? It wasn't his time. But as soon as they left, it was his time, right? And then he also went in secret, not openly. Uh, then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? Sought him, why? Right? They wanted to kill him. Mm. They wanted to capture him. They wanted to capture him, right? Uh, and there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, he is good. Others said, no, on the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. We'll stop right there. I mean, that says a lot, right? These people can't even talk openly and give their opinions. Yeah. There is a division. Right. Yeah, which, yeah, there is a division. Um, but to me, it's just so crazy that they didn't even have the freedom, you know, to openly talk about this because they were afraid of being ostracized from the, the church yeah. or, you know, the religion of that day. What cracks me up is that... Uh... That he did, he did the opposite of, of what his brothers were suggesting. Mm, yeah, <laughs> mm. it's yeah. always opposite. I find it kind of weird sometimes when, like, the Pharisees are afraid to, um, well, like, like you said earlier, Jacob, where the where the masses are afraid to openly mm -hmm. approach Jesus because they're afraid of the Pharisees. But the Pharisees were always afraid of the people gathering in masses to of support of him. They were thinking, man, there's no way we're if they rebel, we're in trouble. Because I mean, the Pharisees were light in numbers. They right. they needed that fear to control, and Jesus takes that fear away. And they were afraid of the fear being removed and the masses. Because even in like another, oh, if we get them now, they're going to stone us. Yeah. You know, in Acts they talk about it. Well, this was what a, a pilgrimage, right? So not everybody was. That's why I think some were like, oh, he's a good, he's a good teacher, or you know, man. And some were like, well, no, because the the people that knew him are those that were knowing that the Jews were trying to kill him, they're like, nah, he deceives the people, right? But yeah. not everybody was, I mean, they came from different places to the temple in Jerusalem to worship, you know what I mean? So it, it was just, it's just pretty interesting to me that, that how there is a, we'll see that there's a division amongst the people, but it's just, you know, yeah. there's always, like, till like this day. You know what I mean? There's still division amongst who Jesus is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of it too, you know, because it talks about that he went up uh, in secret, right? So mm -hmm. why did he do that? Right? If people need to come to know him to be saved, why was he coming up in secret like that? So they wouldn't kill him? Right. So they wouldn't kill him, right? And also, I think part of it is he still had a mission to fulfill. Right. Right. If people started knowing that, oh, he's the Christ, he's the Savior. We've already seen they try to make him, you king. know, king once. Right. Yeah. That wasn't the purpose this time. His purpose this time was to make it to the cross, to lay down his life so he could pay for the sin of the world. Yeah. Right? And so I think that's kind of why that's in there. Um, okay, we'll pick it up in 14. I'll go. Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? And Jesus answered, My teachings are not of my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who chooses to do the will of the Father or the will of God will find out whether my teachings come from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever speaks on their own does, does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is the man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? I'll stop right there. Yeah. So they're 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 um they're being hypocritical, mm -hmm. and he calls them out like, "Hey, you follow Moses' law, but but you see how." Uh... But did they really? Yeah, they did. Well, he, he was <laughs> he was saying that to call right? them out. Yeah. Exactly. They yeah, think they did. Yeah. 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 And, and then you see how he, the the opposite, right? That people were like, 
oh, you know, uh, the glory, people that want, you know, and you see the opposite. You see the world and how they want the glory and how we're always so prideful. Mm. And then you see Jesus like, mm. nah, 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 man. Amen. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so he went up to about the middle of the feast. Jesus went up to the temple and taught, uh, which is a common practice. Rabbis would go up and teach right in the temple uh, from from the scripture that they had back in the day, which was the Old Testament. The Jews marveled and said, how does this man know uh, letters having never studied? And so Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. Right. So he's saying, you know, the reason that they're, they're marveling at what he's teaching but he's saying, you know, it's God's doctrine. And that's why it's not coming from me. It's coming from the father. And he said, if anyone wills to do his own will, uh, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. So he's saying, again, it's not me who's speaking. It's God, right? Yeah. Uh, through him, he who speaks from himself seeks his own glory. And he's not seeking his own glory. We already established that. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. So he's saying, I have no outside agenda. Right? I'm not yeah. trying to glorify myself. I'm literally going to go, you know, die for everybody. I'm trying to glorify God. And that's how you can tell a true teacher versus a false teacher, right? Yeah. Somebody who's trying to glorify themselves and look at me, blah, 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 versus somebody who's literally just trying to glorify God and glorify Christ and what he's done for us at the cross. Yeah, no, uh, what, what Ben saying, no dog in the fight, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He didn't have no agenda. He didn't have no secret motive. Yeah. And, and what 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 really was cool, what reminds me is when he was youngster and they left him at and at one of these uh, feasts and and he was sitting in the temple with the with the rabbis. That's how he learned, right? It was from right. God. Yeah. The people, right? Was he wasn't like a a certified rabbi? I would say, you know, that's why he's like, well, how are these? How the rabbis are saying, well, how has he got these learning these letters, these, mm -hmm. these scripts? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If who taught him, and that's when he says, "My father." You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, exactly. It was about his father's business. That's what he said when yeah. his mom and Joseph came and found him. Like, hey, what are you doing? We've been looking for you. He was like, "Don't you know I needed to be about my father's business?" <laughs> you know, at twelve, <laughs> right? And <laughs> yeah, at twelve, <laughs> at twelve, crazy, right? I literally was thinking about that on the way here. Um, oh, from geez. twelve to the time he died. Yeah. He was literally about his father's business. And then what what to say he grew in wisdom and in stature, you know what I mean? So he grew in he grew up and in his mind he also grew, you know what I mean? Because he was getting that teaching from the father. Yeah. Right. But I wonder what he was doing up there when he was at twelve years old, right. sitting up there. Was he teaching them or were they teaching him? Right. Right. Yeah. Probably yeah. guiding them. Yeah. Um and then verse nineteen, did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you keep the law? Why do you seek to kill me? <laughs> right. And so that's just so crazy. They think that they're, you know, righteous because they're keeping the law of Moses and Jesus is telling them you're not right. Yeah. The heart of the law is to what? Love God and love your neighbor. Well, they're literally breaking both of those by trying to kill him because they're not loving God. He is God. And they're not loving the neighbor because he's fully man as well. They're trying to kill him. Right. And verse 20, we'll read just this real quick. The people answered and said, you have a demon who is seeking to kill you. They didn't know that the, the religious leaders were actually literally trying to kill him, mm -hmm. right? Trying to plot just how to get their hands on him without rallying up this crowd. And it's just so crazy to me. You know, they're trying to kill God, the one who literally puts breath in their lungs. It's it's nuts to me. That's how much the world had him. What's that? That's how much the world has him. You know? Mm -hmm. it's, it, we were, like last night with that guy with the back, the the shoulder problem thing. We, were, we talked about it later. I go, imagine having a miracle like that happen to you and then still be drawn to go do drugs. Yeah, right. You know, that's how strong that is. That's how strong Satan Same. works. You know, the world is, is that it, it it's a constant battle, you know? But, yeah, not, I mean, not to get too far into that, but yeah, it's... Then I yeah. Guess. It, the commentary I have here says, if Jesus were another religious fake, the world would never, uh, never would have reacted in such hatred since the evil world system loves its own its hatred towards him demonstrates that he came from God, which is so true, right? Yeah, I mean, that's so good. Tell me another religious leader, right, of these false religions that are out there that was treated like this, that was crucified. None of them. They were all lifted up by their people, right? Muhammad, uh, yeah. uh, Gandhi, all those people, right? But Jesus, his own people, hated him and killed them. Why? Because he was truly good. He was truly God and, you know. That true all, religion. Right, we're we're evil internally, whether we like it or not. We're all just as bad. Yes, yeah. sir. So. Amen. Where are we at? Twenty-one. 
Come keep going. No, I'll do it. Uh, Jesus answered and said to them, "I did one work, and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers." and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man received circumcision on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. He's telling them, like, don't judge superficially, you know what I mean? Get your right. facts right. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, it ends with correct, judge correctly. Yeah. In NIV. It's kind of cool. Even all those are pretty legit ways to say it. Yeah. yeah. And so in 21, he's saying, uh, I did one work, right? Which was to, to heal the man on the Sabbath. Uh, and he's ta he's pointing out the hypocrisy though, right? Because they want to they wanna kill him because he told that uh, the guy that was paralyzed, right? Take up your bed and walk, right? Yeah. And he did it. And so they want to kill him for that. But he's saying, well, okay. Look at this. Moses gave you circumcision, but really wasn't Moses. It was from the fathers before Moses. The patriarchs. Huh? The patriarchs. You yourselves will circumcise a man on the Sabbath, right? So on this day, nobody's supposed to do anything according to them, not literally anything, right? They're still, you know, doing the circumcisions on that day. Yeah. yeah. So if they can do that, Jesus can't heal a man of his, you know, paralysis or whatever. Remember you say that? Yeah. Um, so he's saying you guys, are, you guys are hypocrites. You're judging according to outward appearance. But judge with true righteous judgment, yeah. you know, just pointing out to their their hypocrisy. Yeah. Get your facts right. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. yeah, that's what I think when I read that. You know? Get your stuff right. Mm -hmm. Get it together. Right. Where are we at? Where are you? Twenty-five. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I think that concludes okay. this episode. Cool. All right. Stay Thank tuned. You guys.